Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video I'm going to be going through all of the Blu-rays and 4K pickups that I've picked up for the month of April 2024. Not too many 4Ks in this one. Um, it's not the biggest haul I've ever had but there are some really fun and great titles that I managed to get hold of. Uh, a lot of upgrades as well from DVD to Blu-ray and a few Blu-rays to 4Ks. But yeah, that being said, I'm going to get straight into it. And the first little batch I've got are some TV shows that I've upgraded to Blu-ray. So the first one I've got is, these first few are just some classic BBC comedies. Just, yeah, from the golden age of humour, in my opinion. So the first one we've got is Faulty Towers on Blu-ray. Yeah, this show is just absolutely fantastic. I really, really enjoy this show. Short-lived as well, only 12 episodes. But, yeah... This is John Cleese's baby once he broke away from Monty Python and I just think it's absolutely fantastic. A really, really funny show. Grew up with these. So yeah, that's Faulty Towers. Next up, we've got a show I always remember sort of being on when I was younger, but I only ever really had the last two episodes on tape, so I would watch those over and over again. But yeah, glad to have this now in full on Blu-ray and it is the young ones so yeah really really enjoy this that sort of alternative comedy that came out in the 80s i also picked up bottom as well this month but that only has a dvd release so i haven't included it here so i'm looking forward to checking those out as well but yeah obviously the late rick mail just yeah what a fantastic um charisma that guy had he was just absolutely brilliant so yeah that's the young ones and next up We've got the this sort of new collection as well on Blu-ray of Black Adder. So yeah, I grew up watching all four series of Black Adder. And yeah, I've never seen any of the specials, so I'm looking forward to checking those out. I might save them till Christmas because I know there's sort of a uh, a Christmas Carol inspired one. But yeah, I've never seen it. I only grew up really watching the standard episodes. But yeah, glad to now sort of have everything Black Adder related in one set. So yeah, that's Blackadder. And next up, we've got two TV shows I've kind of got bootlegs for because there's no official releases for them. I was going through a phase of trying to catch up on all of the nostalgia TV shows I grew up with. So the first one we've got is Biker Mice from Mars. Really, really used to enjoy this show when I was a kid. Haven't seen any episodes since I think these were aired. But... Yeah, looking forward to this, catching up with Throttle, Vinny and Mon, uh, Modo. So, yeah, just really, really looking forward to checking these out when I get the time. So, that's Biker Mice from Mars. And next up, this is just, yeah, what a classic staple of my childhood. This from Nickelodeon. And it is Keenan and Kel, the complete series. Yeah, absolutely love these. They're just hilarious. They're probably even funnier. As an adult, in my opinion, they're just, they're so corny and, and, and funny, and I just absolutely love them. They are, it's, it's just brilliant. Ken Forey, as well, from Dawn of the Dead as Keenan's dad. I always sort of associate him with these two IPs. But, yeah, really, really enjoy this show. I have a blast with it, so that's Keenan and Kel. So moving into some of the movies now, we've got um, some sort of foreign imports now. So the first one we've got is Deep Star 6. I know Stuart George, if you're watching, pick this up as well. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this. I thought it was pretty good. Very much in the same vein as The Abyss, although not as good as The Abyss. Sort of, uh, it's sort of lower tier as well to Leviathan. That type of movie where it's just sort of, it has this really sort of prominent aqua setting. But yeah, enjoyed this one for what it was. So that's Deep Star 6. Next up, we've got a horror film from the early 90s, I believe. I was, it was kind of sort of hard to believe this was from that decade. It felt very much like an 80s film, and that is Dolly Dearest. <laughs> yeah, this movie was nuts. It, it wasn't great at all. It was just really weird. But yeah, I still found it entertaining. So that's Dolly Dearest. Next up, I've got to give a shout out to Alan Scouser for this one. This is a movie I've seen before, but I never actually owned. 
on any sort of format. So it is a spoof movie and it is Dracula dead and loving it from Mel Brooks. Leslie Nielsen as Dracula. Yeah, just a really, really fun film. I'm looking forward to checking this out again. Enjoyed it from what I remember. So that's Dracula dead and loving it. Next up, we've got, got to give a shout out to uh, Nigel over at Rock God for recommending this one. Uh, Bert Reynolds in Sharky's Machine. This was really good. I really enjoyed the opening to this. A great action set piece on a on a bus. It's really, really awesome, suspenseful stuff. So that's Sharky's Machine. Next up, I've got to be honest, I was a bit disappointed with this one. It's from the 88 films, the slasher collection. I was so looking forward to it. I just thought, I'm really in the mood for a good 80s slasher. And this one, for me, it just didn't deliver. And that's Student Bodies. Yeah, I was really disappointed with this one, unfortunately. Maybe my opinion might change over time, but for right now, it just didn't work. Same can be said for this next one as well. This was a sci-fi movie I was looking forward to. Um, and that is Strange Invaders. Uh, yeah, this was... It was okay. The start of it was really slow and it dragged, but I think once Nancy Allen came into it, the pacing picked up for me a little bit more. I was sort of enjoying it a bit more. But yeah, not great. Just bang average. So that's Strange Invaders. Next up, we've got some movies that I've upgraded from DVD to Blu-ray. Now, this next one, I have to... Um, I can't really sort of talk about this film without talking about Dave from Savage Zombie Reviews, who we sadly lost um, about three weeks ago. And I was on a stream with Dave on Scott's channel. We were all there, and one of the questions we got asked was, what is your favourite Will Ferrell movie? And this next one was Dave's answer, and I just completely clicked with him and agreed with him about this uh, because it was such a fun film, and I know how much he enjoyed it. And it is... Will Ferrell, Chris Kattan in A Night at the Roxbury. Yeah, just what a what a great, fun little film. Not perfect, but very, very tongue-in-cheek humour. I enjoyed this one about these two brothers who just constantly trying to get into this place called the Roxbury. Um, the song by Hadaway, What is Love, is vastly prominent in this in this movie if you already hated it you're probably going to hate it even more after watching this but yeah it's even in the opening credits but i happen to just love that song and i'm so glad dave enjoyed this movie as much as he did um, he's just going to be sorely missed so i'm going to give this a rewatch in his honor so that's a night at the roxbury Next up, I've got a movie from the, uh, I think this is from the Disney Club exclusive um, collection. So it's a movie I absolutely love and adore. I grew up with this film. And I'm so glad to get it on Blu-ray. I did have to pay a pretty penny for it, but it is one I do watch quite frequently. And it is a goofy movie. So yeah, a massive, massive upgrade over the DVD that we have looks really good it's a fun film it's a good road trip movie i really enjoy this one i like the songs in this movie i've always liked it it's just a very very rewatchable film really really enjoy it the jokes work in it for me the story works i just have a great time with this one it's a fun little animated movie totally worth you know 80 minutes of your time if that it's just such a fun film so that's a goofy movie Next up is one of my favourite comedies from the early 2000s. I enjoy this one. I don't know how, you know, how sort of, what, what the availability of this film is on Blu-ray now. I don't know if it's out of print, but I've got it for a decent price. And it's Owen Wilson, Vince Vaughn, Christopher Walken in Wedding Crashes. Yeah, I find this film absolutely hysterical. Really, really enjoy it. The, the two leads have great chemistry in it. Vince Vaughn, if he works for you or not, he works for me in this film. But, yeah, really, really fun movie. Looking forward to checking it out on Blu-ray, finally. So, that's Wedding Crushes. Now, next up, I watched the stream, um, Bob's Blu-rays with Ali, and she recommended some films on that on that stream, and I picked them up, and I, I gave some of them a watch. I haven't watched this first one, which is um, 
I care a lot, Rosamund Pike. Haven't checked this out yet, but picked this up of Ali's recommendation and the next two movies as well. So, yeah, that's I care a lot. I can't comment on it because I haven't seen it yet. And these next two, I quite enjoyed them for what they are um, that Ali recommended. Uh, Devil's Candy, pretty good horror movie. The kidnapper in this film was just absolutely vile. I just, I just hated him. He was just absolutely disgusting in this movie. He just really, really put me off. But, yeah, it, it's still a good little horror film. Really enjoyed it. Quite creepy and uh, quite violent in places. So, that's Devil's Candy. Doesn't overstay its welcome, that film, as well. It's got a um, short run time. And this next one, we've got Michael C. Hall, Sam Shepard, Don Johnson, Cold in July. So, I got this on Blu-ray Steelbook. This was like £3 off eBay, uh, which was absolutely insane. It was used, but it came with um, the J-card as well. And... This was a good little movie. There was a bit in this film that had me in absolute stitches involving a car crash. It was just, it was so funny. Um, but yeah, it was good to see a movie with Don Johnson um, after I've recently watched all of Miami Vice. So yeah, that's Cold in July. Next up was a movie from, I believe, late last year, Michael Fassbender, directed by Taika Waititi, and that is Next Goal wins. Went to the cinema to enjoy this one. Really, really enjoyed it. It's all about the um, American Samoa national football team who were just absolutely terrible. They played uh, against Australia in the sort of qualifying game. I think they lost 30 plus goals. It was something ridiculous like that. And he has to um, come in. He's in this predicament. Come in and sort of train them to score at least one goal um, for the next tryouts. And yeah, it's a fun movie. Really, really enjoy it. The characters in it are a lot of fun. Has that Taika Waititi humour to it. Yeah, just a really fun film. So that's Next Goal Wins. I absolutely loved this next one. This horror film. It was just tailor-made for me. Really, really enjoyed it. And it is The Final Girls. Yeah, what a movie this was. I had an absolute blast with it. Last Action Hero meets Friday the 13th. Just what a great concept. So it follows these, these teenagers who, without giving too much away, they sort of end up in this movie theatre. Something goes wrong and they end up being transported into the horror film that they're watching. And I don't want to say any more than that. I don't want to give it away. Because if you can find this film, if you can get hold of it or watch it, give it a go. It's a fun time. It's nothing amazing, but... It was everything I wanted from a modern day slasher. I just had an absolute blast with this film. So that's the final girls. Uh, next up, I picked up, I think, an entire series um, of the film. I think there's four films in it. Uh, so, yeah, I got all four of the Hatchet movies. So we have Hatchet, Hatchet 2, Hatchet 3, and uh, Hatchet Victor Crawley. So, yeah, these were fun, dumb slashes. I had an absolute great time with them. The gore was off the charts in all four of these movies. Really, really enjoyed them. I think the first one's probably my favourite. But they are kind of very much rinse and repeat. They do do the same thing over and over again. But, yeah, look, for any gore hound, these are a must. So, that's the Hatchet movies. And sort of speaking of sort of slashes as well a uh, movie by Eli Roth uh, never seen this one always been on my radar though and it is uh, Hostel I enjoyed this film it was nowhere near as violent as I thought it was going to be I thought it was just going to be wall to wall gore from start to finish but there was actually some good character stuff in this film I just really had a good time with it really enjoyed it um but yeah, the cover was seriously misleading for me. Had no idea it was going to be this good. So, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed this solid film. Definitely has the the, the gore is definitely there, but it just wasn't as prominent as I thought it would. I thought it was going to be like a terrifier, where it was just going to be constant. But yeah, enjoyed this one. Good Eli Roth film. So that's Hostel. Next up, I got an import from Australia. Um, Really enjoyed this film. Good musical little movie. And that is Rudderless. Um, good cast. Good story about this guy who 
some uh, there's a tragedy that befalls him so he kind of just like finds that connection with music really enjoyed it really really good film um yeah so if you can find a copy of it get hold of it that's rudderless next up from shout factory i had a blast with this film i love a good so solid sports movie particularly baseball movies and this one really really surprised me i just had a smile on my face from ear to ear with this one little big league yeah good cast good story really really enjoyed it movies like the sandlot field of dreams yeah angels in the outfield this one really sort of goes amongst them really really enjoyable baseball film so that's little big league next up we've got a movie with jason patrick and bruce dern this was kind of like a, a different take on a boxing movie i really enjoyed it and that is after dark my sweet um yeah kind of looks like a sort of mid 90s porno from the cover but yeah no it was a good film it was a good solid film good performances in it really enjoyed this um, Jason Patrick, a very underrated actor. I think he just didn't get the career he deserved. But yeah, Bruce Dane was really good in this film as well. So that's After Dark and My Sweet. Next up from 88, I got two sort of new releases from them. This first one, it has had a Blu ray before, but I wanted to get this from the 88 label because their slipcovers have just been absolutely killing it. Got some alternative artwork as well. And it is. Chris O'Donnell, Bill Paxton in Vertical Limit. I need to give this one a rewatch. I need to give um, give it another go. It's, I've seen it twice before, but I really remember enjoying that opening to the movie. So, yeah, going to give it a go on Blu-ray and see what it's like. But, yeah, these high gloss, sort of reflective, metallic look to these slipcovers, I think are absolutely great. So, that's Vertical Limit. And next up, we've got from Ivan Reitman, David Duchovny, Sean William Scott, Julianne Moore, Evolution. Enjoyed this film. It's Ghostbusters meets Aliens. Fun little sci-fi film. Yeah, just really, really enjoy it. Over-the-top effects. It's a fun film. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to giving this a go on Blu-ray for the first time. So, that's Evolution. Now, next up is a movie I absolutely had a blast with this film. It was recommended to me by someone on the live stream in the comments. And I do apologise, I can't remember who it was. But if you're watching, leave a comment down below. This movie came up and I had an absolute blast with it. Uh, Jason Priestley, uh, good cast in this film. Even got a small role from Michael J. Fox. Picked up, I believe this is the German media book, and it is cold-blooded. If you haven't seen this film, please do check it out. I had a great time with this film. It sort of follows this guy who's very sort of... He's a bit pessimistic, but he's got a talent for being a hitman. And he kind of gets roped up into that, that world, that profession. And I don't want to say any more about it than that, but yeah. It was a really good film. I really enjoyed this. Some of the effects in it were great. The dialogue in it was good. Um, Janine Garofalo was also in this movie as well. I love it whenever she pops up in a film. But yeah, this was a good movie. Really, really enjoyed this solid film. Very, very underrated film from the 90s. So that's Cold Blooded. Next up, we've got some Cine Editions on Blu ray. I picked up last month uh, the Boogie Nights one and Rumble in the Bronx. So I decided to pick up um, two more and give these. Um, I go because I think they'll look fantastic on the shelf. I do have them on Blu-ray as well, but not these editions. So the first one we've got is Yul Brynner in Westworld. Good little Western movie, enjoyed it. Um, yeah, just sort of about robots going wrong at this theme park. Yeah, really enjoy this film. It's good for what it is, so that's Westworld. This next one is an absolute staple from Stallone's back catalogue, in my opinion. And that is... Demolition Man. I absolutely adore this film. This is a classic sort of Friday night movie that you put on in, in the evening. Yeah, him and Wesley Snipes have amazing chemistry in this film, so absolutely love it. So that's Demolition Man. And the last of the Blu-rays now is again some bootlegs that I've got. Um, it's a Netflix trilogy. 
and that is the Fear Street movies. So the first one we have is Fear Street, so this is 1994 I believe. Really, really awesome movie. Um, enjoyed it for what it was. Yeah, just a good, good little modern day slasher um, set in the 90s, so that's Fear Street. Next up we have Fear Street Part 2, 1978. Really good follow up, I love the way this trilogy sort of took it to different time periods. So that's Part 2. And we have Part 3, 1666. Uh, yeah, they were all sort of very much on the same playing field, this trilogy. Um, really good, really consistent, and yeah, just fun slashes, so that's Part 3. So yeah, those are all of the Blu-rays that I picked up for this month. Gonna move into the 4Ks now. So moving into the 4Ks this month, um, first one is from Vinegar Syndrome. There's not too many 4Ks that I picked up. Um, but yeah, this first one, Vinegar Syndrome, and that is Cloak and Dagger. Yeah, I didn't love this as much as I thought I would. I thought it was a bit generic. Uh, but yeah, good film, good performances. Um, yeah, it, it was very much... I think there were a lot of movies kind of doing the same thing at the time, where they sort of plot where the kid finds something, and then governments and all these people you don't want after you are after you. Yeah, it's it's that kind of movie. Um, but yeah, but it was all right for what it was. So that's Cloak and Dagger. Next up is possibly one of, if not my favourite movie from twenty twenty three. Uh, I had to get this on 4K as as soon as it um, was getting released somewhere. And I picked up the media book, 4K, like I said. Zac Efron, The Iron Claw. I just thought this movie was absolutely fantastic. Really, really enjoyed it. Great real-life story about the Von Erich family, this family of wrestlers. Uh, just what a heartbreaking tale. Yeah, just absolutely tragic what um befell this family yeah it's uh really really emotional stuff but what a film how this this movie was just ex executed to perfection really really enjoyed it so that's the iron claw and then sort of wrapping up the 4ks for me now what a month for james cameron fans so the first one we have is aliens on 4k long awaited release for this i watched this yesterday back to back with the original from ridley scott and i just had an absolute ball with both movies um it looks fantastic in my opinion a lot of criticism i think that these 4ks from james cameron have been getting but for me i just sat down put the film on and i had a great time with it just yeah it looked fantastic to me so that's James Cameron's Aliens. Following that up, I haven't got around to watching this one yet, but I am going to have to check with Nigel over at Rock God 2004 what the transfer for this is actually like um, before I watch it. So, yeah, that's True Lies. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jamie Lee Curtis. Great little standalone James Cameron film, this one. It's a shame he didn't make more movies like this uh, because this movie is a ton of fun. It is sort of... James Bond meets Arnold Schwarzenegger but yeah really really enjoy the action in this one have a great time with it it's just a fun movie fun movie just James Cameron knew how to make them Bill Paxton again has his two pence in the movie and he almost steals the show so yeah that's True Lies and lastly we've got two movies here again from James Cameron I picked up these new 4k special editions that got released the first one we have is avatar um yeah these movies can either be you know make or break break for you but uh i like the first one i think it's pretty good um but yeah had a look at the 4k transfer a little bit and <laughs> these do look exceptional some great are we if they do any more avatar movies i do hope you know they sort of stick to these uh, this packaging but uh yeah that first one really enjoy it Avatar 2, I'm yet to watch this, The Way of Water. Um, yeah, I thought it was okay. It was just it was just rinse and repeat with the story, though. 
The visual effects are absolutely outstanding. They're second to none in these Avatar movies. But story-wise, please give us something new. It's just it's just rinse and repeat and rehashing the same tale. It's just it's mankind's greed over and over again. We're getting the same story in these movies, but yeah, it's visually it's excellent. It's just absolutely stunning. Really, really stellar stuff visually to test out, you know, your 4K equipment. So, yeah, that's Avatar, The Way of Water. So, yeah, guys, those are all of the um, the Blu-ray and 4K pickups that I picked up for the month of April. So, going to leave the video there, guys, and say thanks very much for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.